Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode with Raf King and Mr. Tango here. Yeah, so today I want to talk about some of my happiest memories that I had uh, while working at the school. Um, if you've been following me and my channel here, you know that at one point I was an instructor at a massage school, and I just thought it was one of the most incredible it just experiences. Like It, it was just fantastic. It, it was basically my dream job. I absolutely loved it. Uh, we'll, we'll get into a little bit later why, why my dream became a nightmare, essentially. Um, yeah, it, it, it really, really stole a lot of love for teaching and for massage therapy, which I'm gaining back, by the way. But um, my initial start at the school was fantastic. And a lot of years that I spent there were really cool. And I had a lot of amazing experiences. And one of those experiences, so I, I, I taught anatomy classes. And at the end of your anatomy training, you basically have to take a test over everything, right? It was it's segmented up until that point. But uh, at the very end, you have to go over everything. So it can be a little stressful, you know, and um, I mean, obviously on the students. But as an instructor, you hold yourself to a certain standard. Uh, not just that, but the school hold, holds you to a standard. You have to have a certain pass rate and they have to have, do so well on their exams. Obviously, that's your responsibility to teach them. Um, so it was a lot on me and it, it was showing, but I had this amazing group of students that, I don't know, they just, they, they knew how to really get inside your head in the most beautiful way possible. So we're getting ready for this final and um, I had a routine that I would go through basically for every big final, for every big exam, right? Um, where I'd hand out water and I'd hand out mints. Uh, there was a study somewhere that said that would help you test better if you had some mint and some, some good hydration. So I'd hand that out. And um, as I'm doing that, I tell everybody to put your books away, get your pencils out and put your thinking caps on, right? And that was just kind of like my cue for for telling them like it, it, it's go time, right? And I kind of figured if I had a routine with the students over and over again, um, a very positive one that was really encouraging and wanted them to do well and it, you know just everything pointed in the direction of success that maybe they might do better uh, but this time i was kind of kind of lacking you know i did i don't even remember if i brought water in mints this time and i totally forgot to say the thing and um, there's one student who kind of looked up at me and she's like are you gonna say it are you gonna, are you gonna say the thing and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, um, you know, books away, pencils out, thinking caps on. And I'm kind of doing something else, and then I look up, and their thinking caps, anyone who knows me knows that I'm not just a big comic book fan, um, but I'm a big superhero fan, and I'm a huge Batman fan. Like, it's just, it's just always been that way, right? And you might have noticed the Batman tattoo that I have on my chest. Uh, so this, this, uh, this class, they pull out all these like Batman masks. They're like cardboard masks, you know, that you could buy like, you know, like a hundred for a dollar or something like that. And they all have them on. And, you know, those, those were like the thinking caps that they put on. And it was just so amazing to me, like so cool that they would think to do that at such a stressful time. And I was just blown away. They really stole my heart. I love every single one of those people and I miss them dearly. And... I mean, they did great on their exams. They're, you could assume a great bunch of people like that would also uh, study hard, work hard, and perform well. So that that memory always sticks with me. And in fact, uh, that picture that I just showed you, uh, it's actually sitting on my desk. It absolutely is, 100%. Uh, I got it printed on this, like, uh, on some metal. And so it, it's like, you know, it's sturdy. and It's going to last me a really long time. I don't got to worry about anything breaking because... You know, this guy, as you've seen in other videos, likes to climb on things. And so when I'm not home, he somehow gets on my desk. I have no idea how. And he's knocked that over several times already. Um, but it hasn't broken. No, no way. So that's that's probably one of my happiest memories at the school. And th there are tons. Like, if it doesn't come up in the list here, trust me, it's, it, it's still probably on my mind. And I still probably very much cherish it. Um, but another one that I want to go over. <laughs> so so th this one isn't maybe as positive, but it still really cracked me up just because it shows how, I don't know, how people can be, how humans can be. And it, it was just, I'm glad we can laugh it off now, you know, but, uh, so I mentioned that I taught anatomy and kind of the counterpart to anatomy is pathology where anatomy is how everything should function. And pathology is what happens when it's not functioning the way that it should. And so I was teaching one of those classes and I wasn't taking 
this particular group of people through their anatomy courses. And sometimes you would get to do that, right? Sometimes you would just, you would just get to be in those, like in a, in a certain group of people's faces with science just constantly. And it was really cool because you got to kind of uh, control how the information was given to them. And, you know, I, I know how like malicious that sounds, but when you have that control over such a big topic, it can be beneficial to the student because, uh, you know, they have some consistency there. But it didn't happen this time. And the anatomy teacher, she, she's amazing. I still love this person so much. Uh, Alicia, I, I still have so much respect for you. You might be one of the few people that I still respect from the school. I mean, oh, and Chris, too. I love you, Chris. And Fong. I love you, too, Fong. And Justin, you're pretty cool, too. But, okay, so there were some really cool people there. But Alicia, she was this uh, just anatomy extraordinaire. And when people would listen to her speak about anatomy, it was law. Like, that was like the Bible, right? Like, like and, it, and for good reason, because she knew what she was talking about. So one day, I'm talking about the heart, and it pumps something like four quarts of blood per, per minute or something like that. I, you would have to fact check me, but the point being, I used uh, quarts of blood per minute. And she had used, oh no, she had used quartz, I'd used liters or something like that, right? One of us had used quartz, one of us had used liters. And when I had presented my information, it was after she had presented hers. So the class really like not understanding that a liter and a quart are relatively the same thing, we're not having it. Like I, I'm talking like, like I, that immediate like poopy face that like grown adults make when they're angry, right? When they're just like, the, like it, it's it's poopy face, and it was wild just how like the backlash that I got from it, just just people standing up and and yelling and and like like I had just come in and like like just desecrated something sacred to them. So uh, we don't allow phones in class, but this was the one time that I was like, no, I like look it up yourselves then, like I. Don't, I don't know what to tell you because I come prepared to class every time. And I had even looked up the conversion rate from quart to liter because I thought this might come up. And I was able to tell them that, you know, it's like one to 0.9 or something like that. You know, like it's relatively close, especially for our purposes. Like I could understand if you were um, doing really specific work with the heart and with blood work or something like that. But, you know, we're massage therapists. We just want to know what the heart does and what it's what it's capable of just to appreciate it. Um, so I, I didn't think that like the, the point one difference was going to be that huge, but where I'm going with this is they had pulled out their phones. They looked it up and it was incredible to see like this, like the shift in this crowd. Cause there's like what 30, 40 people that are in this class here and they're all just not having it. Like, like mama bear said, this is what it is. And this is what it is. And now we have this jokester up here saying something different, like not having it. So Um, but when they did realize what it was like that, like that shift from like wanting to attack me to kind of like, like it was, it became jovial. They're laughing at themselves. You know, I was laughing at them obviously. And there was this kind of, there was this moment and why I like this moment so much is, you know, I didn't take time to like dig into anybody. I, I use it as a way to say like, like, first off, we we can trust the information coming from me. I'm, I'm, always going to double check it. And if I haven't double checked it, I'm, I'm going to let you all know. Um, but not just that, but like you, you can't only subscribe to one person and their information and their education. You have to think outside of the box. You have to think for yourself. You have to, I mean, appreciate this person, but not to the point where you're giving up on everything else. And it's funny because uh, people would gravitate towards Alicia like this. And like I said, for good reason, she's incredibly sweet and intelligent and so present and authentic. Uh, But it was really funny in the school atmosphere to kind of see this, like this worship of her in a way. Um, And I'd like to actually segue into something that it seems to constantly come up in my life, right? Like I've said before that I'm a big Bruce Lee fan, Um, but that being said, I'm okay with him not being a god, right? 
Like, I can be a fan of him, and I can be a fan of his shortcomings as well. And in fact, he encouraged you to question him and the things that he said. Um, and on top of that, he didn't want to be remembered as a martial artist. He wanted to be remembered as an actor and a philosopher. Those, those were the main things, particularly the top of the list, an actor. But we worship him, or there are people, I should say, that worship him as the greatest martial artist to ever exist. And I think that's cool and all, but I think it also defeats and disrespects, I mean, what he was. And I, just, I, I see this in people where they finally start to feel something like a connection. They finally start to feel some kind of like some, some guidance or direction. And it's locked in. Like, that's all it is. And I don't think that's the right way. Like, I think we should, like, obviously that's a good start. Like, yo, you got some guidance and you got some direction. But I think moments that make you realize that moments that wake you up are incredibly beautiful moments. And I got to witness 30 of those moments, 30 to 40 of those moments happening with those people. So that was awesome. I thought that was super, super cool. And I got a good laugh out of it. Another beautiful memory that I have. Um, so... One day I come into class and I'm handing out the morning quiz because we would start off like, you know, simple 10 question quiz over the information from the day before or something like that. And I'm handing it out and there's this gal who's, who's sitting in class. And for some reason I get this, this overwhelming feeling to tell her that I love her and not like in this like romantic way where, you know, I'm confessing my love for her. No, no, no. Like I said to her verbatim. Hey, I love you, man. Like just a very like plutonic and encouraging and compassionate. Like just, just, I don't know why I feel the need to say this, but I love you, man. And I didn't think anything of it. She didn't really, I mean, she wasn't like, oh, I love you too, Raph. Like she didn't say anything back. Like she kind of looked maybe a little gloomy. I didn't know what was going on. Wasn't going to stop to ask. It didn't seem appropriate. We moved on with the day. So that Friday, we were having a team meeting, and my boss is like, so, Raph, um, you told this person that you, you love them, right? And at first, it came up in like a kind of weird way, and like I, I thought I was going to be in trouble, but it turned out that she, she went to the education manager, and she had let her know that that made all the difference in her day. She had this really, really really messed up thing happened to her that was continually happening to her. It was one of those things that you just, even if you picked up your entire life and moved across the country, it'd still be there. And it was coming back to haunt her. And so like, you know, I didn't know any of this and she obviously wasn't being very open about it. Um, So for her to hear that, and it touched me because like, I feel that the universe, God, whatever you whatever you want to call it, this higher power, this this greater design of what you came from, from what you are, um, is, is going to send you hints on what you should be doing. It's going to send you clues, you know, via vibrations of feelings. A lot of the times, we're looking for like these grand signs, and some sometimes they do happen like that. Sometimes you just can't deny what you're looking at. But I think sometimes you got to trust your gut too, and you just kind of have to go with it. And if it's not anything that's going to be harmful or incredibly offensive, then go for it. It, it might be exactly what the moment needs, what a, what a person needs. So let me go ahead and move on to another memory here. There was a student that I had who was a heavy smoker and in massage therapy, you, you just, you can't, it, it, it's really hard to be a smoker and keep a top of the line massage practice. I'm not saying it's impossible. Some people definitely pull it off. But I remember my first massage shop, there, my, my client that I had, he had been a smoker and he'd done some sweating throughout his session. That happens. So the room smelled like cigarette smoke. And as I was walking out of the room, my boss at the time was walking past it and she thought she had smelled cigarette smoke on me. And she was ready to fire me immediately, like right on the spot, let me go, no questions asked, done. And this is not uncommon. This is not an unusual thing to happen to massage therapists. They they smell smoke on you, goodbye. That being said, I really, really wanted this guy to be a massage therapist and not have to rely on 
nicotine in general like not just not just switching from like you know cigarettes to vaping or cigarettes to chew or whatever just it'd be really cool to not have to rely on that i don't judge anybody who smokes i, I really don't like to judge vices all that much i mean we're kind of living in a crazy world and we're all just doing what we can to live somewhat meaningful and happy lives so there are times obviously when we have to curb those vices or when they get out of control um, and this is one of those times where unfortunately it, we had to help we had to curb this right so not that I am certified or anything to help somebody quit smoking, but I think just being a friend and being encouraging and uh, giving alternatives, giving you know baby steps to get to that point, um, it doesn't always have to be cold turkey, I don't think. I don't think so. I think you can take steps to get there. Uh, and he did, and he is now nicotine-free, which is really cool because I'm sure his massage life is way easier. I'm sure his life in general is much easier. I'm sure he's saving money and feels healthier and happier. And I don't know, I, we, we used to do these little cards um, at the school where you could like, you know, take a card and it was like a hero card, right? Where you could like write, oh, this person helped me in this way. And they would pin it up on the wall. And I I didn't ever get a whole lot. I don't know why. I, I felt like I had good connection with the students and a big impact on them, but I, I never got a lot of cards posted up on the wall. Um, but that was one of them, and I thought that was so cool. Like, I, I, I still got that card. Like, it's, it's, it's in a box in my, in my shed, but I still got it, right? Oh, Tango's done. Um, you good, buddy? You don't want to be up here? You don't gotta be up here. It's okay, man. And just just one more memory, just briefly. And it's kind of kind of a collection of memories, I guess. A uh, particular day of massage school that I just absolutely loved. It was my favorite day. I wish we had more than just one day out of the whole curriculum that we did this with. But it was blindfolded massage. I might even go into a whole video just in blindfold massage because it's it's beautiful. It's. Oh, man, I just have so much appreciation for it. This isn't something you would do necessarily in a normal session, right? But it's more of a training tool. But that's that's why I love it, because where it is in the program, you're kind of just getting started. I think you have about 12 weeks of training under your belt at this point, I want to say. It might even be less. It might have even been six or seven weeks at this point. Um, but, you know, you're still getting your feet wet. You're still learning. You're still getting the mechanics down. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is at one point you get really good at flow. <laughs> at one point, we really show you what you can do and it's through blindfold massage. I mean, your eyes, this is so much sensory in input for your nervous system comes from your eyes. I wanna say, I've read a, fax, a fun fact somewhere like some 80% of the sensory input that you take in is from your eyes alone. So, I mean, even test this right now. Stand up with your eyes open, stand on one leg. Okay, maybe don't do this, but you could imagine. Put the leg down, close your eyes, stand on one leg again. Like, you get kind of wobbly at first, right? You're a little more disoriented because your eyes were helping you to balance. So when you take the eyes out of the equation, it, it, it's almost like, uh, you know, like Daredevil, where like all the other senses become like stronger in a way, you know? But in this case, it's touch. Touch becomes so much more intuitive and intricate in the way that it's giving you information and what you're using that information with. And what's really cool is body mechanics also come together as well. All of a sudden, everyone's okay with standing up straight with a, you know, Nice, nice eyes on the horizon type of posture. We're not going to have our heads down or too far up. We're not slumping. You know, our shoulders aren't rotated in. They're actually like using their body to create pressure. It is amazing to see because it's, it's, it's not like after, like, again, we did this one time. So it's not like after so many sessions, they start to get it. It's immediate that their body mechanics become better, that their flow becomes better, that they don't question so much. Because the other thing is when you're in a room with 30 other people practicing massage and you can see all of them a there's distractions right b you might be comparing yourself to their technique c you just 
you might just be socializing again back to the distractions right so to take all that out to eliminate all that and to just let somebody express massage is so cool it is just it's so cool when i would get ready for my lectures um, there's always a demo part for the hands-on classes, right? And as I would get ready for those portions, I would practice all that blindfolded. And then I would teach it, right? Like I, I, w- I would understand the information so well that I could do it with my eyes closed. So when I was teaching it, I could make eye contact with everybody. Like I could talk to you while doing the work instead of being just focused on the work. Um, the other thing about that is when you're just focused on the work, it's easy to, again, lose those body mechanics. So blindfold and massage can really drill home some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful habits to have. Uh, so if you're a massage therapist who's kind of just getting into everything, uh, I would recommend doing a little blindfold massage, even if you're just starting on certain segments um, or going segment at a time, not starting off with a full body. That's totally fine. I mean, you got to start somewhere, but it is. It really allows you to not rely on your eyes when you're doing a session and it's almost like like you're trying to like see knots or or, or muscle tears and don't get me wrong sometimes you can see swelling sometimes you can see areas of congestion or that are pulling in a certain way Um, but it's it's these babies right here the more you train your touch the more you train how you use your hands the easier it's going to get for you but I digress those are some of my happiest memories from the school. I think in another video, we're going to go over some of my happiest memories outside of the school, uh, maybe during uh, some of the startup of Living Kinetics and all the hecticness that that was because it was beautiful and awesome. Uh, but until next time, I'll, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I do encourage you to book a massage with me or reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, yeah, I'll see you all in the next vid. Take care.